It's time for another episode of the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. I'm Lori Rivers, your host. If you're brand new, welcome. This is where we talk applied observational astrology. That's right. We observe and we apply everything. This isn't some cerebral thing where we just talk the math. We apply our observations. What's the point of having all this knowledge if you don't use it? That's what I teach. That's what I do. And that's why my clients um, enjoy what they do. Uh, We're also going to talk about my move. You won't be hearing dogs and donkeys in the background. You won't be hearing all these beautiful birds tweeting. Um, They're not tweeting right now. Well, some of them are. Um, You won't be hearing my neighbor down the canyon howling and screeching. You will just be hearing me and maybe sometimes Malcolm. So we'll talk more about that as well. Um, Once again, this podcast is sponsored by my patrons. I want to give a big shout out to all of them. Without you, this podcast isn't possible. So let's talk about that Scorpio new moon as well. It's a doozy. It's a doozy. It's a pretty cool doozy too, if you know how to use the energy. So here's some inspiration to help you meet your aspirations. So first up, let's talk astrology a little bit. So the reason why I ramble on about life and life experiences is because they apply to the astrology. Astrology is reflective of the world around us. It's reflective of the world within us. As above, so below. As within, so without. So a lot of times when people are talking about astrology, they often um, are just talking astrological ease. They're just talking in general about astrology placements, um, astrological cycles. They intellectualize it really well, but they don't talk about how it impacts you, about how you can utilize the energy around you. And when we're looking at what I do, it's observational applied astrology. I observe I see how the energy is working. I learned a long time ago how to feel into it. Um, that's a little different than, than the analysis side where I look at the possibilities and probabilities and I give you my best guess of how things might turn out. You know, nobody's ever 100%, which is always funny when people are like, well, that part wasn't right. I had a comment like that on TikTok the other day. And I'm like, yeah, but this all was. So, you know, if if I'm 87% correct, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, Anything better than 50-50 is good. Um, Anybody can hit 50-50. Uh, so anything above that, and I run in the 87% accuracy rate. So, you know, sometimes I get a little higher than that. Sometimes I have a nice, nice streak in the nineties. Um, but it's really about how to work with the energies themselves. And that's why I'm particularly fond of watching lunar transits or the moon transits. Lunar means moon. Sounds obvious. Not everybody puts that together. You know, you may know it, but you don't put it together. And that's okay, too. I don't expect other people to understand astrology. Not everybody spends almost every single waking hour of every single day of their adult lives doing something. Just like I admire other professionals in other fields who spend that much time knowing and doing It's just experience, and you can get that experience too. And remember, it takes time as we learn to observe. One of the things that you, uh, that's Malcolm, one of the things that you want to do is learn how to ask better questions, you know, um, 
And when people ask me, is it going to be okay? My response is usually okay is relative. What do you mean by okay? You know, I, I don't know. Do you mean safe? Do you mean happy? It depends. Asking questions leads to better observations. And I was really, really fortunate in my Saturn return to meet a mentor who wasn't really a very nice person, but they were a very knowledgeable person. And um, (laughs) I won't name names because I'm being honest and I don't want their feelings hurt, but they're a bit of a jerk. (laughs) And um, meaning like lack of social skills and a pretty big ego. They're in my parents' generation. So that Pluto and Leo generation can be... um, a little wild in the spiritual space as far as as ego goes oh there's a malcolm bark we're gonna take a break real quick okay i think i have malcolm on his inside barks he has a very big boy bark he's a 20 pound dog but he has a 80 pound dog bark um which i prefer I prefer. I like his big bark. Um, People are often shocked to see he's not that big of a dog. But he's seven feet tall on the inside. So let's go back. In my Saturn return, I had a mentor. Now he was a spiritual mentor. He didn't know anything about astrology. But he taught me other metaphysics. And one of the things he taught me was how to ask questions. Because the quality of the answer is dependent on the quality of the question. And I used to ask the same narrow questions that don't really give you very good answers, such as, why me? Um, Because the answer to that is almost invariably, why not? Um, How, you know, it's, or how come? Those aren't good questions, you know? Um, And so I learned through working with this person how to shape and frame questions which helped me then shape and frame observation. And it doesn't really matter what you're doing in life. You don't have to be looking at an astrology chart. Um, You could be looking at your life, which is your astrology chart, by the way. And you can enhance your understanding by learning how to ask powerful questions. And powerful questions don't have to be fancy. They can be something like, I wonder how long this will last. And then you look up a transit, right? And you take a look. Or I wonder what's coming next. Instead of, oh no, what's going to (laughs) happen? Because you, you, one, it's stepping back into a neutral space. Powerful questions are always coming from a neutral space. They're not emotionally charged. Um, And... They usually are open. They're not yes or no. They're not closed questions. Like, is it? Isn't it? Do I? Don't I? Those, those don't give you a lot of room. But asking how, what, and where will get you further. So those are the questions we look at. How, what, and where? Where can I open myself up and be more receptive? How can I um, take most advantage of this situation? What is it that will move me further right now? Um, It could be, I know the problem. What kind of solutions are available? What are the possibilities? You know, writing those down. When it comes to astrology, we're looking at possibility and probability. So when I'm analyzing a chart, I'm like, okay, what are all the potentials here? What are the possibilities? Worst case, best case. Most often, things fall right in the middle. We rarely see the best case scenario we rarely see the worst case scenario. And it depends on how good your imagination is. 
on on what you see. I have a really strong imagination. And so I can imagine really, really good outcomes. And I can imagine really, really terrifically horrible (laughs) worst case scenarios. And I learned a long time ago that my worst case scenarios rarely come to pass. Okay. My worst case scenarios rarely come to pass. Sometimes they do, but rarely. And so I've learned through experience to look at the middle ground when it comes to life. So when people are asking me, so when is everything going to collapse? Is everything going to fall apart? My answer is mm, probably not. Probably not. We're probably not going to see a total collapse. Um, and when I envision total collapse... It's pretty <laughs> or Mad Max like. We'll go there. It's 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 pretty bad. Um, I don't see us going that direction um, in general. I don't. I see. I don't see us sitting around holding hands by a campfire. Everybody getting along either. Um, when I say I think it'll be relatively okay, I mean we're probably not going to have a nuclear war or, you know, complete societal and cultural and civilization collapse. But we are in massive systemic change. That means all of our systems have got to change. And they will change. Um, what that change looks like will unfold over time and it is dependent on each one of us to make that change if we all keep wanting to be the same and fighting the change within us well it's going to be a bumpier ride overall because the more people who kind of embrace the need for change within help create the change without so look at you you're helping humanity So the reason I talk about applied astrology on on practical levels, these are the things you can do and not can do. I think that's that's a slippery slope, but here here's the best way to use the energy of the day. You can do any damn thing you want. When people ask me, can I do blah, blah, blah during Mercury retrograde or Venus retrograde? Can I do this? It's not a good question. Of course you can. You can do anything you want. There's going to be consequences to any decision. And consequences, as I've spoken about in previous episodes, are not necessarily bad. You can have positive outcomes. You can have negative outcomes. Their outcomes are consequences. We just use consequence as a negative thing. But the word itself means with sequence with sequence, con, with sequence, sequence, in order, okay? If I throw a glass against a brick wall, odds are the glass will shatter. That's a logical consequence. If it doesn't, it's a damn fine glass. So, it's training your mercury, training your mind, opening up the pathways of understanding. And that is what everyone was kind of trained not to do. Critical thinking has been discouraged in the United States for a very long time. Even when I was in school. Back when the dinosaurs were alive. Back in the previous century, Rita. Rita Rita is one of my patrons and in a coffee with Lori, she she asked, Since you've been studying so long, even in the previous century <laughs> Oh my god. And it's true. It's true. Even in the previous century I was studying astrology. <laughs> Gosh, that tickles me. Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, you can um, you can note we were not taught to critically think, and honestly, even my parents' age group, you weren't really 
taught to question. You were taught to problem solve a lot more. Um, But I remember in high school being really, really frustrated when they would present um, a written exam. And I would see up to three possible right answers. And the teacher would say there was only one. And I would explain how that wasn't true. That, you know, it, it dependent on the conditions which were not given in the exam, the conditions were not part of the question. <clears throat> dependent on the conditions, there was more than one answer, more than one right way to go. And so it was almost impossible to answer some of those questions correctly without all of the information. And um, so I would say, well, if this happened, this would be what you do. And if this happened, this would be what you do. And it didn't always go down very well. I was not a popular child. Let's put it that way. Because we were taught to find only one right answer. And that only one right answer attitude is why we're stuck in this bullshit right now. Um, in the 90s when they went to centralized supply chains and were starting to go that direction I, I would argue with the bankers and the business people I was around I'd be like are you people I mean how many drugs are you on I knew they were on drugs but geez I'm like you people do not understand that it just takes one major event <clears throat> you know And they were like, oh, no, we'll we'll never have a global event. And I'm like, that is just right there a problem. Anytime you use always and never, yeah, that's going to screw you at some point. And here we are. Here we are. Uh, uh. That uh, uh, was at Malcolm because uh, the squirrels are very busy today. And so is Malcolm. Malcolm is my dog. If you're a new listener, we we are out here, out in nature. And occasionally, um, I talk to my dog as well as you. I could do a, a recording. And honestly, let's just get to that really quick. And I'll get back to questions and applied astrology. Um, I could do just a regular podcast with my headphones on and my microphone. I've been enjoying just sitting in the garden watching my dog and recording this on my phone. Um, I do a lot of very scheduled things in my life. And this is where I let things just kind of free flow. So not everybody likes that. But you will soon get a more traditional podcast without leaf blowers and donkeys and squirrels and my dog chasing squirrels in the background soon enough soon enough soon enough so let's let's go back to applied observational astrology that's why i teach living by luna living by luna is the class where i teach you how to observe transits and pay attention to what is happening in your daily life as these planets move around we start with the moon Because the moon is the most causal. The sun is the next most causal. And um, we pay attention to everything from energy levels, emotional states, physical activities, etc. And I teach you what I learned as a very young astrologer when I did something very logical. I asked my mentor who was in Australia and I was in Bahrain and I had no access to books. All I had was email and it was the early days of the public internet because I taught people how to use computers at an internet cafe in exchange for time at that internet cafe online. Um, I was a young mother and had taken a break from my job and that's what I was doing and I stumbled into astrology and so um, I would anxiously await my instructor's emails and I would sit down and do the work 
So imagine trying, you know, everybody complains about distance learning. And I'm like, hell, I was doing that in 1995 and 96. What are you talking about? So um, one day I got a woolly hair and I said, hey, I'm, I'm a Cancerian. The moon is an important planet for me. Shouldn't I pay attention to those transits? And he was like, whatever floats your boat, sweet pea. So I started to pay attention and I developed a technique and in my mind it's probably not all that um, innovative in in a sense because it was probably exactly what the more methodical and thoughtful people did back when we were first consciously becoming aware of our environment. So thousands of years ago, somebody looked up at the moon and went, hmm, stuff happens when that happens. I want to pay attention to this. <clears throat> There's kind of a, a saying with archaeologists that if it's a pretty place, people like now, pre- it's, and it's always been a pretty place, people have probably always liked it. So if there's something we're paying attention to right now in our natural world, it's probably something people have always paid attention to. Um, On weather, I check my astrological calculations by paying attention to nature outside my window and not just to see if it's raining. What are the birds doing? What kind of birds are around? Um, What kind, like, are things here out of season? Um, what are the insects doing? Um, what, you know, how are things flying? My great grandfather uh, grew up on a farm in Nebraska. He left around the Dust Bowl. Um, my great grandmother married him at, um, after her first marriage ended because she was married for 52 years to his cousin, actually, who died. And then um, 10 years later, just about, she married my great-grandpa. And uh, they were very happy in their elder years. And anyway, he taught me how to observe the birds and the plants and the insects. Because they didn't have the National Weather Service. They didn't have, you know, people judging weather. In fact, my grandpa used to laugh at the weatherman on TV because my grandpa was more accurate judging the weather by watching the anthill. So I was very fortunate to be raised around people who shared their wisdom and their knowledge. So paying attention to things is part of being human and I'm not going to blame technology because we are humans and we develop technology. Our cell phones are the equivalent of the wheel or harnessing fire. At some point, we'll have other technologies as well that seem just as incredible. For those of you who grew up with these things, they're just part of your life. That's how I felt about cars. Just part of my life to my great-grandmother she remembered the first one she ever saw because she grew up in the transition period in the early 20th century. So, just because it's part of our daily life now doesn't mean it always has been, and yet the planets have. And we have observed what we could see for a very long time. So learning how to apply your understanding into daily life is a way to grow, become more conscious, and a way to um, gain a deeper understanding and be able to live a more well-rounded life. Things hit you less between the eyes and more you can see it coming. It doesn't mean it's always easy to see it coming, but you can plan for it and and do your best with that energy versus get hit upside the head with it out of nowhere. Makes a big difference. Um, it's kind of how I felt about 2020. I was beginning to really doubt and question myself in 2019 um, because I had seen 2020 coming for so long and I was like expecting things to happen and 
none of none of my worst case scenarios were coming to play and I know you're like but it was a pandemic Lori I'm like yeah you should have seen my worst case scenarios um <laughs> so when we got locked down I went oh that's it you know pretty much when I heard about the virus because we were paying attention to it where I worked a little bit early than most people so because I was in tech <clears throat> and the tech world was very informed because of the dependency on the manufacturing in China so I was like oh that makes sense so it wasn't as bad as it could be as bad as it was and it just shows how fragile our economies are and how fragile our political systems are and it's very interesting that people are waking up and realizing they have a hell of a lot more power than they thought they did and even though there's a whole bunch of well it's not a whole bunch it's a small group of angry not very bright people who want to cause violence in this world um, they're not going to get their, their revolution the way they want it. We will have evolution, but we're not going to have revolution. It's just not going to happen. They're not going to make it happen. So don't worry about that Pluto return coming up in April. By the way, I wrote a blog post about it. Go look for it on my blog. You'll find it. There is a significant amount of change. But you can ride that change. As much as they talk about empires rising and falling, and they do, humans carry on. And so it's how you choose to carry on that matters. And that is everything. If I listened to the people in my life as a young person who told me that I would always be broken and I would never know what happiness was and I wouldn't even want to live on this planet past 30. And I'm not going to lie, there were times I didn't want to be here. But if I had um, acted on their doom saying of me and they were world-famous psychologists, um, well... We wouldn't be having this podcast now, would we? Attitude is everything. And sometimes my attitude sucked and so did my life. And sometimes my attitude was better and my life improved. There are many ways energy expresses in a chart. And the faster you get on ob observational astrology the better you are. Don't just look for worst and best and the big stuff. Look for the little things because the little things are everything. Speaking of, speaking of, um, that's why I want to talk about Saturn. I'm excited. We have the Saturn workshops coming up on Halloween and I'm going to be working with people on understanding Saturn from multiple angles because most of what you know about Saturn is kind of scary. Saturn can be a bit of a hard ass. It's about consequence. And remember what I said earlier, that consequences are neither positive nor negative. They can go either way. They are a logical series of events, okay? So, um, hang on, I've got a squirrel alert. I got my dog here. He is anxiously watching this squirrel. And the consequence of me not having him on a leash is I have to hold on to his collar. It's neither negative nor positive. He may find it negative. I might find it uncomfortable, but here we are. That's a consequence. He may bark a little bit too, because, you know, it's a squirrel. Saturn is about structure, it's about discipline, it's about authority. Pluto is power. Saturn is authority. And we all have our own authority. We hand it over all the time. We hand it over to um, 
people because we were trained to hand it over. We were trained to hand authority over to somebody else instead of owning it for ourselves. Um, And as children, you have to. You know, as small children, you have to count on the adult peoples around you. And not every adult is wise or smart. And depending on when those adults had you, if they were young, they didn't have a lot of life experience and they were just doing what they knew. If they were older, they might have had some more wisdom under them, but they may not have been uh, as up to date with the world. So, you know, there's pluses and minuses to everything. <clears throat> Good boy. Yeah. It's just gonna... Just bringing him closer because the squirrel action is getting a little bit frantic up in those trees. But yeah, so authority. And then what happens a lot of times in the States is, you know, you're on your own, 18, 21, etc. And um, you don't know a whole lot and you're just dumped into the deep end. <laughs> Not every time, but uh, it, it can it can be the case. And so when you're um, dumped in at the deep end and you're trying to figure things out, it's much It feels much safer to look to your professors or look to the other adults in your life or your government officials um, to tell you what to do because you got in trouble for making the wrong decisions as a kid. But what's amazing is is you get to that Saturn return and you have the the ability to become your own authority. And that's where you get to decide where do I, where do I keep handing my authority over to other people? Where do I step in line with society? And when do I uh, pull it in and uh, become my own? And you know what what rules will I create for myself? What boundaries do I create for and with myself? Everybody talks about the boundaries they set on other people, but you've got to set boundaries within yourself as well. Um, it's your discipline, your drive, your ethic, the <clears throat> work ethic, your ambition. And so understanding that is important too. It's very important. So that's some of what we're going to cover in the Saturn workshop. And that's why I'm kind of talking about applied observational astrology. Saturn is also about practicality systems making things work <clears throat> it's an overarching series of structures Saturn also rules the bones you know no bones day bones day I'd love to go study the, the Saturn aspects one second we have a squirrel alert ah squirrels I have to tell you the story about Malcolm and the tree of giving one day It's a little morbid, but it was um, also, I'm sure, how religions start. I know, now you want to know, but I'm not going to tell you this episode. Remind me. So, let's move to the next segment. I'm going to talk about moving and the Scorpio new moon. So I'm moving. I am moving. That's why I've been a little quiet on TikTok and uh, everywhere else because I am moving. And um, as you probably know, moving is its own thing. And uh, I am excited. For the past couple of years, I have lived with my daughter and son-in-law. And I love them very much. And it's a nice big house. It's not like we were cooped up with each other or anything. But I need my own space because I want to create a lot more content. And it's hard to do when other people are in the same space. And um, and I have a life. So, you know, I'd like to have that life. So I'm moving. It's about an hour away from where I'm at. 
and um, I cannot believe I scored my apartment because not only is it a nice sizable apartment it comes with an attached garage and if you live in an urban area or southern california then you will know parking is at premium i have a new car and right now it's parked outside and it's getting pollen all over it and birds are pooping on it and i'm like ah brand new car Arr. So I'm excited about my new place. And I've got a lot moved over. I don't get internet until Friday. And so I can't really be there because I don't get enough of a cell signal inside the house to do my work and my readings. So otherwise I'd be there yesterday. You know, otherwise I'd be there yesterday. And I'm not sure what my son-in-law's schedule is as far as getting my big stuff down. But I've got most of my little stuff down. And so, um, I'm excited to be spending the night on Friday. I gotta figure out how I'm going to be spending the night. Uh, I managed to get my futon down, but I'm missing like four bolts for it because it was taken apart six months ago. And I am missing bolts. So I have to go find said bolts. Or at least go buy new ones. I'll do that today. So I'm not going to be moving stuff today. I've got paperwork and writing to do. and So no no loads being driven down and back. Because it's, um, as some of you have had readings with me in parking lots, um, the traffic makes it harder for me to get back in a decent time unless I'm scooting out here at daybreak. And I needed a rest. I'm getting tired. But I've got a lot done, and I'm super excited about it. So I'll do a load tomorrow. Um, so moving, moving. It's tough on a Cancerian to move. Um, we take a minute to settle because our home, you know, it's our environment is important to us, and it's important on an energetic level. So I moved some of the things that have emotional importance to me first to set the energy. And it's so funny because I lived out of a suitcase for years in my 20s. Um, I had like a three-year, four-year run where I, I was literally flying, you know, every other day practically. You know, it wasn't every other day. Every other month, though, I literally was living out of a suitcase. Um, And that's what took me all over the world. But as long as I had my suitcase, I was home. So cancer is like that physical attachment. So, but, you know, it's not like I'm going that far. We're already planning holiday dinners. Which I'm kind of excited about. I like to host those things, so... I'm excited to host some holiday dinners. So, that should be fun. Um, Been looking at that Scorpio new moon. And boy, is it a doozy. The Scorpio new moon is at 12 degrees. 12 degrees Scorpio. And it is exactly opposite Uranus. We are very fortunate Uranus is retrograde. Yeah, yeah, because if it was direct, we'd have a really big earthquake. Um, The fact that it is retrograde means there'd probably be some seismic activity. I do not believe a tsunami is going to wipe out the East Coast. I just don't. Um, I just don't. I don't see that happening. But um, that volcano could have more activity. And there could be um, a large event that day. It's November 4th. And the more I look at that chart, the more I am just, you know, curious as much as anything else on what's going to happen. Because we're looking at um, the node is not changed yet it'll be changing uh, from gemini to taurus in december remember the lunar nodes are always retrograde because it's internal 
They're calculation points. They're not planets. Um, Neptune is retrograde. When I look at the chart for where I'm at, uh, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. I think we'll see some, again, some possible seismic action on the West Coast as well. I don't think it'll be huge. Like, I don't see it over a seven, which is sizable enough. Um, probably more in the five range. That's just my best guess. Um, no, I don't think the Cascadia plate is going with this. If I did, I would let you know. I, my son lives in that area. My brother lives in Portland. So, I would let you know. Um, if I felt there was danger. I don't. Um, in fact, I don't think it'll be a huge event. On a personal level, this is an amazing time to push through and make some major breakthroughs. Um, this Scorpio new moon coincides with the Scorpio full moon. <clears throat> so anytime you have a new moon, you can set intentions to manifest long-term over time. It's a great time to do magics of all kinds. But don't be manipulative with it. Like, don't try to get somebody to love you or obsess about you or think about you. That is just ridiculous stuff, you know. It, it's not going to work out well, folks. You know, it's just not. It's not going to work out well. You know, do this for you. You know, open yourself up. Um, Venus will be at the last degree of Sagittarius. So Venus on November 5th moves into Scorpio itself. So um, the Mars will already be in Scorpio. It's not conjunct the new moon. So that's nice. That would be just really, really bigger than we need energy <clears throat> right now. So definitely if you want things to change, if you want healing, if you want to come back from negative circumstances, if you want to blow through creative blocks, um, depending on where Scorpio falls in your chart, that's where you're going to want to set your intentions. Um, on a mundane level, we'll probably see some doozies of storms, again, some seismic activity, and we could see um, some financial issues come to fore. I don't think it's a big crash because Uranus is retrograde. And I, I just don't. I think they're going to stave it off. But I think it's going to wibble wobble. I think we're going to see the signs of, of economic situations. So um, this is important for you to know. I'll be writing more about it. This is just my first glance. I'll sit down and I'll write about it. Um, but, but do note, November 4th is quite a day. It is time for Patreon shout outs. So my patrons make this podcast possible. I am forever grateful to them. I want to give my shout outs to my moderators on Discord first. We've got Kathy. We've got Chris. We have Casey. We have Hannah. These people keep things going and flowing. And especially while I'm in my move, I have huge appreciation for them. Uh, Chris is also my assistant and sends out the links to recordings and reminds me to do stuff. Ha ha. And uh, I'll remember to do some of that stuff here on the podcast. Thank you, Chris. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at what we've got going here. Um, we've got Jennifer, Kayla, Aaron, Liam, Caitlin, Erie, Melania, Zach, Susan, Sarah, Natasha, Angie, Emily, Jennifer, Krista, Alex, Alexis, Alexis. We've got two of them. Alexis B, Alexis C, Nicole, Danielle, Rebecca, Sharon, Marissa, Becky, 
Tara, John, R.E.G., The Magical Misanthropy, Denise, Michael, Jen, question mark, Susan, Alyssa, Erin, It's Grace, L'Oreal, Jacqueline, and Rosalie. And we'll take a look at what's hopping in the Discord. We made some new threads. Uh, thought I'd talk about these. So if people are talking about their astrology charts, and that's always cute and fun. But these are also, speaking of observational applied astrology, so we've got the Taurus Cancer Cafe. Um, that is actually a place to talk about recipes and cooking. Gemini, Aries, Aries Gemini, sorry, um, Party Line is uh, chatting. Chatting, you can talk about things, but it's a very, it should be an active place of, of chat and talk and do and how to's. Leo, Leo Libra Libations. And this is a social thread as well. These are all social threads. Um, <clears throat> Scorpio Capricorn, uh, Secret Society, but it's also a great place to mastermind for business ideas and strategies. Uh, Sagittarius, Aquarius, uh, what do we call that? Rebel HQ, that could be more social stuff, social action, um, and a little rebellion there. Cancer Virgo, uh, Common Sense Library, that is uh, just a place to, to kind of plan things out. And the Pisces Taurus uh, Chill Pad, that's also a place for people to chat. Um, <clears throat> there, I kind of paired it up for people with similar energies to, these are all sex styles. These are all signs that tend to get along really, really well. So in essence, you could just go in and chat and say, hey, here are my placements. I figured um, the more air and fire areas would be a little more active and the introvert might enjoy some of the quieter spaces and get to know each other. We'll, we'll play with that and explore with it. Next coffee with Lori. The next coffee with Lori, which is uh, not this coming week, but the week after we'll play around and decide how to use those threads. Uh, our news headlines are there. We've got uh, a bunch of stuff coming in. Um, that's always a very, very busy thread. Different people putting in headlines that kind of match the horoscopes. Uh, let's see, social off topic is always busy um, as people talk about stuff. Uh, in their lives. Um, oh wow, if somebody woke up to a tornado warning, that's not fun. That's not fun. You know, we've got crazy weather, you know, that's for sure. Um, arts and crafters is another thread where people are putting up the stuff they make and our comedy thread, which is kind of off topic. It doesn't have to be astrology and we just put stuff in to laugh at because the world is serious enough. Um, our astro crypto people just kind of talking about what they're doing so <clears throat> there is so much on that discord i know it can be a lot but do make yourself known if you're a patron come in and say hi get to know people you know if you're not feeling connected if you're not feeling networked get your butt in there get your butt in there come talk with us come share with us um just hit the welcome thread and read the rules and then hit the ground running all right, uh, next segment, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the workshops coming up, but also why we traditionally offer workshops as astrologers um, beyond books and blogs and videos, and how it helps us learn. And, um, oh yeah, that thing Chris told me to do. I'm gonna do that. So I make these things called Astro Guides. It's like a magazine. <clears throat> but each, uh, uh, each issue, and I've got three of them up, each issue is on a specific topic. The first issue is what I call the ultimate cheat sheet. It is, it is a great beginner's guide to um, astrological understanding. It's 47 pages. 
there's a lot to it it's not just written word it's visual as well again that's why i'm using a magazine layout versus a book layout <clears throat> so that's a great place to start if you're just getting started and even if you've been around for a while you might find it interesting i talk about things from an evolutionary astrology per, uh, perspective and in my case it's a progressive evolutionary astrology perspective i am busting patriarchy every chance i can get with my interpretations i think it's really important if we're going to grow forward that we dump a system that has served no man or woman other than those at the very top and even then didn't really serve them <clears throat> but I'm not going to get into that existential discussion. Not today. Not today. It's a beautiful blue sunny sky day, by the way. You hear all those birds. Yeah, we had an amazing rainstorm. Uh, don't get used to that, California. We're not going to get a ton of that this winter. But it was certainly necessary. Um, the south... It, the southwest is still going to be mostly dry through the winter, um, but that rain was certainly welcome. It was bad timing because I wanted to be moving all of that day because it's my day off. <sighs> and you just don't drive here. You just don't. Um, you can't see the pavement on the freeway and people don't really know how to drive in it. So I do know how to drive in it, but the other people who don't um, scare the crap out of me the way they drive in it. I'm like, no, no, do not brake when you're hydroplaning. Do not take your foot off the frickin' brake when you're hydroplaning, says this nor Northwesterner. It's like, come on. And so I used to really make fun of Californians in the rain, um, up, back up in the Northwest. And uh, now, now I get it. I get it. It's different conditions. But yeah, rule number one, do not hit the brakes when you're hydroplaning on a freeway. <laughs> Just don't. It's not, the, the consequences are usually not pleasant. It's not a good plan. So, um, yeah. So, the astro guides I've got right now, I've got a guide to Chiron. That's gonna, uh, you'll be able to get that when you take the Chiron class in um, November. I'm doing a workshop on Chiron. I think you'll really enjoy that one. Unlocking the key to your healing path. Chiron is not the wound you cannot heal. It is not. And um, I'll do a whole podcast episode on Chiron for you. But if you want to grab the Astro Guide and you don't want to take the class, just head over to the shop in my website and you'll see the three issues of the Astro Guide. We've got the Ultimate Cheat Sheet, which is the astrology basics we've got the guide to chiron and we've got um your introduction to intuition and instinct understanding the difference between instinct and intuition and where they fall in the astrological chart and how to identify your particular intuition and sensitivities in your chart so uh, those are in the shop on my website. They're five bucks. Uh, the Astro Guide issue one is nine dollars, but the other two are five. Um, you'll get Astro Guides in all of my workshops. I'm working on the Saturn. That's one of the reasons I'm not moving today. I got to finish up the Saturn guide for you because the class is on Sunday. <laughs> oh yeah, don't cut it close, Lori. My Sag Mars can handle it. My Sag Mars always cuts things close. I get it done. It's fine. Um, so we'll have we'll have all that. Um, I'm teaching two workshops on Sunday: Saturn through the houses and Saturn returns. Um, Saturn through the houses and Saturn returns. And my hawk friend just showed up. He just landed on a branch. He's probably checking out the same squirrels as Malcolm. Oh, my goodness. This is probably the last podcast episode I do here. Since I'm moving, I look forward to the podcasts I make in my new abode. That will be super nice. I'm looking forward to being ensconced in my own little palazzo. 
my own little baroness, baronet, I should say, my own little manor, my own spot with my own kitchen. Oh my God, I'm going to live stream baking. Yeah, I got to get some good kitchen shares because I've been watching those bread making TikToks and it's killing me not to try some of those designs. We'll see how good I get at it. I'm not as patient as those types of bakers. They must have earth signs to them. Um, As a Cancerian with a Sag Mars, sometimes I'm just like, screw it, it tastes good, that's good enough. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll make some stew and some bread rolls. Oh, I cannot wait. I look forward to cooking for you. That'll be super fun. Um... I can't wait to make Christmas cookies. I know there's a lot of religious trauma out there, but you know, I left the church so long ago. I left it at 17. I'm 52. Some of this is just cultural stuff. Some of it has nothing to do with religion. Um, In fact, Christmas cookies really have nothing to do with anything. They're celebrations. We celebrate in the wintertime because it's really long and it's really dark and we need things to celebrate. That's why there's so many festivals at that time of year. So I make cookies. Maybe we can make astrological. I'm going to have to go on Amazon or some other, if you guys know something better than Amazon, but I need to go find some astrological cookie cutters. (laughs) That would be fun, right? I can always ice them, but... We'll have to see. I could make gingerbread astrological symbols. Mm, I cannot wait to move. I will be moved. But anyway, I want to thank all of you who listen. I want to thank all of my patrons for keeping this ad free. And I look forward to seeing you or talking to you again. I am going to do a video podcast with this soon. Once I get all set up. You'll be able to watch me on YouTube with all of this stuff. Um, That should be pretty fun. Should be pretty fun. We'll see what happens. And uh, anyway, you have a really great day. Friend Crow is telling me it's time to go. And uh, remember, the quality of your questions determines the quality of the outcome. I'm Lori Rivers, and I will be talking to you on the next episode of the Awake Space Astrology Podcast.